Okay, my friends, Roger Mudfossil University has been studying light, been studying its interaction with our atmosphere, and I think it's possible we reach the point of no return. Okay, my friends, and the reason I say this is the point of no return is that I've been watching this for years, about six, seven years now, and I've been doing research on what I consider to be the nucleus had to be a dipole, and I believe the nucleus of everything is made of these which are light, which are photons, and photons, half of that, right there, that is an electron. It has a positive and a negative side. The negative side is dark matter. It's a muon, a boson, whatever you want to call it. And when they concuss as a photon, then the energy values begin to show up. This is the actual dark matter, and these are the values of separation, and there's actually depths that I can see now from this new photography we have here. And we're going to get into very, very, very deep. All right, most of you know me for the mud fossils. This, you see the, the feather pattern on that duck's head or goose's head or whatever it is? That's a goose. And that's the neck right there. That's the center of the neck. If you look at it and you get it in the right patterns, in the right light, in the right moisture, you can see all these things. That died flat like this, laying like this. And then when it was lifted up, the neck was out here, just ran right on and snapped off. And that's what these, they, what this is called nucleophilic substitution. All of the tissues and even the feathers have turned into what they call feldspar. And I'm very in tune with this. So we're going to get into a whole new regime here at Mud Fossil University. You saw the light. You saw that we know about mud fossils. That's really probably my primary, whoops, upside down. The sun just turned upside down. It's a photo reversal. Okay, here we go. Now, this is what we're going to do. I have 1,400 videos. I just got to stop all that. I don't know whether I should just take them all down or leave them there. or I don't know what to do at this point or to start a new channel. But whatever is going to happen, it might be called MFU Free For All. And that's what it's going to be. I am going to post every morning probably a couple of videos. Just I'm going to take some old stuff and put it together and new stuff or whatever happens. I, whatever. It's a free for all. Whatever I want to do, I do because I am in charge. <laughs> now, and then what's going to happen? What if I've, I've been putting these videos up and everybody's, oh, this is fabulous, fabulous. They're very nice, very, very, very nice. And then you get all these people that all they want to do is argue about that, that, that there's no space and there's no nothing. I mean, it's just, and that I will not tolerate. So don't start that. I don't want to have to block people, but I have blocked a lot of people. I feel bad about it. But I'm not going to argue that there's no space station and there's no Mars. and So I don't want to go down that road. So we're going to have discussion about material facts. If you can show me that the space station doesn't exist, I mean, just, I'm out of that. Now, we're going to be talking about space, with energy, light, all of those things, because that's what the whole thing is about. It's all about light. That's the only thing that exists. Everything there is, is made out of those particles I showed you of light. We're going to be talking about the problems with the globe spinning in these particles, being crushed, and we're blowing it up like a balloon with the way we're burning things. And, we're, and with this 5G, it turns water into 1,700 times bigger than it is when it's in its molecular form. Anyway, we got all kinds of things to talk about. We're going to be looking into the ancient texts, which have been just ignored and just, you know, really laughed at. People have been laughed at for a bazillion years. And, and again, I don't go down that road about this flat earth nonsense. The earth is round. You can see it. Now, I know at some point it could have been an accretion disk because that's what's happened to our galaxy. I have shown this. And as, as things spin, they condense because they're spinning into other particles that are in space and that creates crushing effects and I have a lot to talk about that I got a lot to talk about everything but I don't want to be attacked for 10 years I had a black guy yesterday same thing over and over and over they just never stop anyway. and I'm going to show mud fossil support for God for God. God is, there's no question that this evolution stuff and the Big Bang, absolute nonsense. If That's what I'm going to try to 
display. Now, if and that's why we want to have this discussion, because this has not been allowed. Not been allowed. It's not that there's no support for it. It's not been allowed. You go to any academic institution, you say, hey, I want to talk about God. Pfft, you're done. <laughs> that fail you in life. Literally, I'm not kidding you. And I'm, that, that's just not hyperbole. That is what's happened. And it, right now, you go to any of these scientific groups, nothing about God here. No God here. Anyway. I'm going to be doing one to two videos a day, and then we're going to have interactive, scheduled question and answer, like a Zoom meeting. And I don't care anybody. I want the top physicists in the world to come and discuss it with me. I want the top geologists in the world. I want NASA. I want European Space Agency. I could discuss, I could stand face to face with anybody on the planet right now in any field because they were the ones that laid down the gauntlet of truth. I present it, they dismissed it, they refused to engage in it, and now I have been allowed to trespass on their territory because they would not stand on their own territory. So let's see what happens. This is how we're going to handle this. And I want you to present this to your teachers and everything else. Now, I need some help because I'm not good at doing organizational stuff. I understand the research, but organizing this stuff to make a good, every day I need somebody to open up a meeting and, you know, sort of moderate it or whatever they do. You know, I know how to talk. Or, you know, I don't want to be seen on the thing. I just want to show my videos. That's all. And, and discuss it. You know, I'm too old to worry about any of the rest of this stuff. I suppose that's all I have to say for today. God bless you all, and we will talk about God. Because there's no question, all of these things, I got giant human beings, DNA certified. This is what killed the academics, because they, they, they know they're wrong, and now they're really, really upset. <laughs> talk to anybody at Yale. Ask them how they feel about mud fossils. <laughs> I've been working, well, they won't talk to me, but it's been 10 years. And they're right down the street. I got the stuff on my property, it's sitting right out here. It's been DNA tested, CAT scan, all this. There's not a single person in the world can deny it, except if you go to Yale or you're a professor at Yale, then you could certainly deny it. Who's going to bother you? You're too smart to be bothered. All right, this was John Glenn. Um, just, I'm just going to play it, listen. I saw this long ago, and I kept thinking. Whoops. I'm going to turn. Outside, if they like it, they're allowed to move. They're coming by the capsule. All right, let me just explain to you what's going on. John Glenn took off to orbit the Earth, I believe it was three times, from Cocoa Beach in Florida, 1962. I just happened to be there watching it. Whew, he takes off. He's getting in to where... The sunrise, he's looking into dark space, but the sun is coming up behind it, and those, elect those electrons are coming into that dark space, and he's starting to see them glow all around him, and he's calling them fireflies. Now, listen to exactly what he says. This is very, very, very cool. All right, let's get back to here. Here it goes. This is a mind blower, absolute freaking mind blower. And I saw this long ago, and I kept thinking, what is that? Like they're luminescent. I never saw anything like it. They're around the moon. They're coming by the capsule. Uh, and they look like little stars. Uh, now, don't forget, he's going to say he's just coming up into the sunrise. Uh, they swirl around the capsule and go in front of the window, and they're all brilliantly lighted. Uh, they come the average maybe uh, seven or eight feet apart. All right, what is he seeing? He calls them fireflies. They're above him and they're below him. He is in the midst of these. What are these things that are swirling around his capsule? And you can see them. They don't blink on and off. They, they're sort of lit up. These are some form of a molecule that's being excited by the light particles that are hitting at the photons. 
Just like I showed you those other particles glow and when they get being concussed, these are being concussed by the light and he's looking past them out into the darkness of space so they are being lit up for him. You see how specific he was, seven or eight feet apart? Later he says they're like a sixteenth of an inch in, in, in diameter. And All right, you see, now, this is another gigantic clue. This is all coming back to me. He's, he's saying these particles are it's very, very tiny particles, but they have a big, big region around them. That is what's called the 21 centimeter line. A hydrogen atom controls a magnetic region around itself 21 centimeters huge that's over eight inches so he's saying that they're eight feet apart now i don't know in space now i was doing some research looking into the stuff the russians were doing they got some fabulous research we're going to be getting into all of this but let's just go a little further with john glenn I, I understand exactly, exactly what he's doing here and exactly what he's running into. These are the particles that are our, our, our ionosphere. And as he goes through that ionosphere, they won't be able to communicate with him. Before we go any further, you see this down here? You see that white stripe around here? That's the Earth. Oops. That's the Earth. All right? As the Earth scrubs through the particles that are down there, making them glow like that. As I have been saying right along, that is creates the heat, and that's what also creates lightning and everything else. Scrubbing our surface and our atmosphere against the particles that are out in space. All right, now let's talk about that. If there was more particles coming this way, we would be scrubbing harder because we're spinning. This is a globe. It's a round globe spinning through a soup of opposing particles. Now, what is this layer? That's our atmosphere. And why is it white and glowing like that? Because it's scrubbing. It's crushing our coating of gases against this coating of particles that are flooding towards us. So if we have more coming at us, it's going to glow. If we have more pushing out this way, it's going to glow. What does that glow mean? That glow is heat. That glow is excitation. That glow is atmospheric instability. It's chaos. It's changing weather patterns. It's condensation where normally you wouldn't have it. It's evaporation where normally you wouldn't have it. It's a disaster as we blow this layer up like a balloon and that is exactly what we are doing it has nothing to do with carbon dioxide other than the carbon dioxide is emitted from combustion it's just it's they swell up if you take this thing right here and you've turned that into gases it would fill up my whole house that's what we're doing we're burning everything there is to solid and we're blowing up like a balloon. Not only that, 5G is a water evaporator. All right, it's a water evaporator. You put anything in your in your um, microwave, you bip, you see all the moisture, all of the steam. What is that? 1,700 times bigger than it was when it was condensed as water. And they're putting them every eight houses or something like that because there's so much water in the atmosphere they have to evaporate it. What are they going to do? This thing is going to be out here. What do you think is going to happen then? we got all kinds of problems that they just n never thought about and don't seem to care about. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to discuss them. We have to do this on our own. There's just no other way. So I can see.